So Jasmine, this is the next edition of kind of my extra material instruction that I'm trying to give you via these videos. Today we're going to talk about the role or the function or the job of each person in a jazz band, traditionally in a big band at least. And so um, I find it super important if you have a specific job or a role or a function to perform in a group, any group, musical or otherwise, that it's really helpful to know what that is before you start. Um, I think one of the worst kind of job situations I've ever been in is where the definition of my job wasn't real defined and I had no idea really what they wanted me to do. That leaves the door open for all kinds of problems. So in order to kind of um, stem some of those problems, I thought it best to go over really quickly or as quickly as I can anyway, the different functions of every part of the jazz band. That way you know what you're supposed to be doing and you know what you're not supposed to be doing. Okay, so here's my take on it. Um, jazz bands are traditionally divided into two categories and I'm going to suggest to you that there's three, at least in your life, um, and most younger groups have three. Um, the traditional ones are the rhythm section and then the horns and the horns will include um, saxes as well, even though we're woodwinds. Um, and so those two groups are the main breakdowns of a jazz band. The third one that I would like to suggest to you is obviously the director, um, especially with young bands or most school bands, the director has a pretty important job, supposedly anyway. Um, and so that parts of there traditionally in jazz bands, um, the director or whoever's band it was would also be playing most of the time. So then the roles get kind of mixed up a little bit. Okay, within those two groups, each group or each function person functions differently. And so I'm going to attempt to kind of shed some light on how I see um, things happening within each one of those sections. We're gonna start with the rhythm section because without a tight rhythm section, you have no band. It, um, the horns cannot overcome a rhythm section that is not working together. So um, I think you probably understand the rhythm sec section consists of the drum set, the piano and the bass, and often a guitar player as well. Um, obviously, we can have other instruments join them. Um, sometimes we have vibraphones or shakers or kabasas or a go-go bells, whatever. Um, they're all part of the rhythm section, but the standard jazz big band swing bands had um, just the four players. So this drum set, the piano, the bass, and the guitar player. I'm going to go over quickly what each person's job is within that. So the first one is the bass player. Um, the bass player is the judge and he lays down the law as far as time. Um, the bass player is the timekeeper of the band. It is not the drummer's responsibility, um, wholly anyway. The bass player also provides the course chord structure. I'm um, usually just one note, right? But um, he lays down the basic structure of how the chords are going to go and then he just sets it there and it's up to everybody else to walk in that way. Um, the bass player and the set player have to be very closely aligned or there's going to be all kinds of problems in time and if they don't understand what they're part of keeping the time is, um, there can be some major problems that develop. So, but basically, bass player is setting the chord function and um, keeping time. Set player, drum set, they're responsible for establishing the style or the feel of how a piece is going to be. So is it straight up swing? Is it more of a bluesy feel? Um, do we have Latin jazz going on? Is there um, a shuffle feel to it? 
or is it more just straight swing? All of that is the set player's responsibility. Yes, they also keep time. Yes, they can solo. They do all of these awesome fills that make it so exciting. But their primary purpose is to set the style or the feel of the piece. Another huge thing that um, the set player will do to help out the rest of the band is to provide cues. <laughs> so if you're lost, um, the set player will also often help you out, tell you when a new section starts. Um, they will also um, catch the kicks, which is um, the ensemble parts. They'll play them on some part of the drum set. So to kind of back you up and say, yep, that's, that's right, you're doing it right. And yes, they will correct time when necessary, but basically um, their job is more about the feel than uh, time. All right, piano players have a lot to do. They um, primarily are responsible for the chords structure, um, all of the chords, not just the bass line. And they do what is called comping. So they will have just the chord names and they will interpret that how they see fit and often just a repeated rhythm on those chords. D, dot, D, dot, D, dot, D, whatever. They will um, often anticipate what's going on in the rest of the band and fit their chords in the spaces. Also, they can solo. It is a melodic instrument they can solo. It also provides a great deal of rhythm and um, it helps to create that style that the set player is trying to accomplish. So the only person left is the guitarist and uh, he or she is the chameleon of the group. The guitar player can do rhythm, just straight chords on every chord or note. They obviously provide chords and so they do the harmonic structure also and they can also solo quite well. Um, so they uh, provide quite a bit of color and tone to the overall section when they're there. They're often not there. So, you know, it just kind of depends on who's around when the band's getting put together and what the vision of the band is often. So that's it for the rhythm section. Okay. So all about time, all about the feel, all about the groove. These people are um, just, you cannot do without that. Um, all Four of those people have to be on the same page and um, have the same vision of what's supposed to go on. They will sit fairly close together in an ideal perfect setup and they will continually be making eye contact and playing off of each other. And a rhythm section that is super in tune with each other makes the entire group sing and just feel great to play in and very exciting to listen to. So the next major section are the horns. Um, and that includes everybody that blows into their instrument. Um, obviously we have three in intermediate sections um, within that big horn section, um, trumpets, trombones, and saxes. I'm gonna start with trumpets. Yay, they would say that they are the most important section of the band. Um, I don't know that that's true, but they would probably say that. Um, I envision them as the fighter squad of um, the band. They are in formation flying behind the lead trumpet player. Um, I think that's a pretty good description of what their job is. The lead trumpet, of course, is going to set style and dynamic contrast for the piece. Um, he or she will say, this is how long that note goes. This is um, in this style, this is how long we play this, this is how short we play this. Um, a forte in this piece is this. Um, and because the lead trumpet is often screaming in the stratosphere out there, everybody can hear them. And they um, are well suited to lay down the law as far as style or um, dynamics is concerned. They also, um, I just mentioned are way high up in the air most of the time as far as pitch. And so um, they often in a standard jazz complement are not the solo chair. I know in our arrangements, often the solo is given to the first chair, but um, in a traditional jazz arrangement, 
they will, will often not give the solo to the first player because the solo is an opportunity for the lead player to rest their chops after being um, up there for so long and they just give them a break while the second chair takes the, the solos. So one of the functions of the second trumpet is to solo. Um, second chair is to perfectly complement whatever the lead player is doing and help disseminate that information to the rest of the band. Um, aside from soloing, that's also your job. Okay. The third and the fourth trumpet provide the fill out of the chord and um, all four of those players together, um, you often are playing the same line. There, it's not too often where um, third and fourth are doing something completely different than the first and the second. Um, so that's why I feel like you're just that fighter squadron kind of going right behind the and just being a wall impenetrable wall behind the lead player it's actually pretty cool when you have four strong players in the trumpet section um, lots of exciting things can happen next i'm going to move to the saxes who would also say that they are the most important um, section of the band um, as a saxophonist i would like to say that's true as a director i say I don't know if there's a more important thing than lead trumpet, but also how can we say that trumpets are more important than the bass player? Um, I hope that you're catching some of my humor here and everybody in a jazz band is super important. There are no fluff chairs and there's nobody that is not needed in a jazz band. So saxes, we have the lead alto. Lead alto sits um, harmonically and dynamically above the rest of the section. So to get that great jazz saxophone sound, that player needs to be slightly louder than the rest of the section. And not quite as loud as lead trumpet most of the time, but they have to be really on the same page as what the lead trumpet is doing and be able to give that information also to the rest of their section. Unlike the trumpet section, the lead alto is a solo chair most of the time. Um, I, we're not playing as high and we don't have the, quite the demands on our embouchure as a trumpet player does. So um, we can solo and be the lead chair and it, there's really no problem with um, endurance in that. So um, they just go ahead and let the first player do it. So um, you'll, if you are lead alto, you are responsible for making sure that your section is following the um, style and the articulations and the dynamics that is set forth um, between him, him or herself and the trumpet player. So if there's somebody that's playing it a little too long, it's the lead alto's job to say, hey, um, yeah, on that fourth beat, we're playing it shorter than what you are so make sure you don't hang over there or great job i really love how much you pick that up without me even talking about it so either one of those things are appropriate for the first chair player to do second alto is very near and dear to my heart and it's often looked overlooked um, your job as a second alto player is to anticipate what your lead player is going to do and provide the perfect complement at all times to that you are never to overpower the first chair, alto, um, but you are to support them in everything they do. And that means you have to listen really hard and get to know the particular style of the lead alto player that you're working with and make sure that you are ready and able to just sneak right in there and give them that support to do their job. Um, a, sec a really strong second player will make the saxophone section just tight. So um, please don't succumb to the idea that, oh, the, not, the person that's not as good plays second. That is not the case. Often I think the second chair is um, a pretty tough chair to be in because you may not be making the decisions, but you are making the decisions somebody else made happen. So um, be ready and willing to really think about what the lead player is doing and making sure that you're carrying that out just even a half a second before that happens. It, um, it's quite a process when you really get good at second chair. 
Lead tenor is next. Um, this is also a solo chair. Um, they probably get more solos than the lead alto do. Um, there's just almost always a lead tenor solo somewhere lurking in the piece. And they are kind of a chameleon also in that they often join in with the trombones in a counter melody or some sort of extra part. Um, the saxophone section doesn't always stay together as a team. Sometimes the altos will be doing something and then tenors will have a counter melody within just the saxophone section. And um, that's part of what makes it interesting to be in the sax section. Um, we have to fit our pieces in to each other and still maintain a section sound. So that is kind of one of the challenges of being in a uh, jazz and as a saxophonist, um, you have kind of two layers. You're under the trumpets usually, um, a little bit above where this is dynamically, not like hierarchy, but dynamically you're a little below the trumpets and a little above the trombones as a section, but within the section, there's also a dynamic range. So um, tenors can often jump ship and become a trombone player. Um, and often they have a counter melody that bones don't even have, that they're just doing their own thing. Um, the second tenor supports the first tenor in everything he or she does and is much like the second alto player and be ready to just know what they're going to do ahead of time and be right there. Uh, it's also kind of a death tough thing and you don't get the glory of the solos usually but you just kind of have to keep your head down and do your job and um, without a strong second tenor much like the strong second alto player you just have a weak section overall and the lead players can't usually um, overcome weak seconds so every person is again very needed and very integral to getting the sound that we're trying to achieve Brings us to the Barry player. Um, Barry is the ambassador of the jazz band. Barry player works closely with the bass player and with fourth trombone and with insert player here. Um, he or she often is the baseline for any saxophone solo leads that are going on. Um, they keep the harmonic structure of the saxophone section anchored but they also sometimes jump ship again and become a trombone player or just kind of do their own thing without anybody. And so that player's got some extra responsibilities because they need to look at their part and say, measure by measure, who am I supporting at this point in time? Um, am I really part of the saxophone section right now or is I, am I more of a bassist? Am I doing my own thing completely? Um, do I need to really focus in on what the left hand of the piano is doing? Maybe I'm helping them out. Um, every measure or section can change when you're playing the very chair. So um, that is kind of one of the challenges, but also one of the fun parts about Barry is that you flip and round through all of these sections and just kind of, you know, help them out, hang out there for a while, and then come back and be a saxophone for a while. And then you can jump up and be... Um, in the rhythm section for a while. It's kind of fun. So I've nicknamed the Barry Chair the Ambassador. So we're two trombones. I love trombones. Uh, the trombone section um, really bridges the gap between what's going on in the fighter squad and then the saxophone section. The trombones fit that middle part. Um, you often provide some rhythmic counter to what's going on in the melody. Sometimes you also have melody, um, but as a section, you are often doing something completely different than what the saxes are doing for sure. Sometimes you're also with the trumpets. Um, depending on what level of swing you're playing is um, sometimes they just really only have two main melodies and then they'll put the all brass against all of the saxes. But in some of the harder arrangements, the trombones have their own thing completely. Lead trombone is listening very closely to the lead trumpet and they are going to um, identify what the style is and make sure their section is following that. 
and they can also kind of flip that up to the um, lead alto player and just make sure that all three of you are in on the same page. Um, lead trombone is also a solo chair. Um, again, you're not usually as high up as the lead trumpet, so um, you will solo. Sometimes they will put the solo in the second for the same reason they put it in the second trumpet, um, and that's to give the lead player's chops a chance to rest. Um, third and fourth bone are, again, harmonic, fills out the harmonic chord, and the bass bone or the fourth bone part also does the deep low notes um, along with a Barry sax player and the bass line. So um, that's kind of how the band members function. And I said that in traditionally, historically, the band leader was also a player most of the time. Um, there was a few exceptions like Paul Whiteman's band, but most of the time Glenn Miller played in his groups. Um, Artie Shaw played in his groups, all the names of the groups, um, the person actually played as well. But in a school band, usually the director does not play. And that is because our job is to make sure everybody else is able and understanding what their role is in the group. Because you guys are young and you are learning, um, it is my job to pick music that is within your skill set and pushes you at the same time to learn more things. It is my job to set concerts. It is my job to set the tone of the group and to make sure that the information that the lead trumpet player is giving everybody is correct <laughs> and to help out whatever section is happening at that moment that's having a little bit of a struggle doing whatever job, right? So um, in a nutshell, that's it. That's the specific functions of every person that's in our group. And um, I hope that you can see that there is nobody that I said, you know, we really don't need this person. We'd be just fine without insert whatever there. Um, jazz bands, even though they're called big bands, they are small in that usually there's only one person on a part. And um, that means that if you don't do your job, nobody else will, and that job just won't get done. And some jobs are easier to overcome than others. I mentioned that if your rhythm section is not on the same page or not working well together, um, the horns will not be able to stay tight. And um, staying tight or keeping it in the pocket means that everybody is doing the same thing in the same way at the same time. And when that happens, when everybody is fulfilling their job, it is spectacularly fun, um, both to play in and to listen to. Um, that's basically it. There is no written work for this video. Hooray, hooray. Um, I just really wanted to kind of give you my ideas of how I see each group functioning and if this was something that was kind of eye-opening to you, um, drop a line to me. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. That is not an assignment, um, but that just, I like to get feedback on what's going on. Um, other than that, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> and I will see you on Thursday. Have a great week.